getting that lead to appointment to transaction is the hardest part of the sales funnel to measure. And that's exactly where we step in. So many other companies help you get that lead to the first conversation. But after that first conversation is had, there's a big gap between the appointment and the actual closing. And so by introducing a client portal in that conversation, getting them where they spend the most amount of their time, which is on their phone, into your ecosystem is going to increase your lead conversion. Welcome to Cash Call, the number one real estate sales podcast where we cover real sales skills in real time, as well as industry vendors, lead providers, CRMs, websites, and top producing teams and agents across North America, all so that you can improve your business in 30 minutes at a time. Everybody, we have an amazing guest today, Randy Carroll, who not only uh, looks like a model, but is also <laughs> a pretty cool guy to hang out with. And he is the co-owner of Rooster. He's been in the real estate tech space for over 10 years now. Uh, and he's passionate about helping all of us improve our businesses and lives by being able to facilitate more real estate sales and better relationships. So Rooster is the first patient portal for real estate. And Randy is excited to tell us about that today. The model piece is very generous. Hey, there you go. Look at that. Um, Randy, thanks for joining us today on Cash Call. Brian and I are excited to have a conversation with you today. Thank you for having me. I'm really uh, honored to be here. So Randy, why don't you just give us a basic description of what Rooster is and how do agents use it? Yeah, great question. And so the easiest way to understand Rooster is to think about the patient portal that you get with your doctors, right? So I had to book an appointment with my doctor uh, I, I had their app downloaded on my phone, opened it up, I booked an appointment, I could review previous appointments, I could access their network of specialists, I could communicate directly with my doctor, all neatly and easily from this app on my phone. But there is no such thing in real estate. If you're a buyer, a seller, or a homeowner, you have different resources, we have to go to different places, and very few of them are actually centered around your realtor who's helping you in the transaction, be it buy, sell, um, or if you're just a homeowner. So we built the first ever patient portal of real estate, um, and we built it to be branded entirely around our client's experience. Uh, well, built it to be branded around our client's brand to help provide the best experience. Okay, and I can make some assumptions as to why it's important to improve their experience. Why don't you tell us? What the, how, what is this, how does this, this equate to dollars for us? Yeah, that's, that's really what people want to know. How does Rooster make me money? That's, that's what matters. <laughs> um, <laughs> and that's fair. Um, so I would say that there's, there's two really, two, two areas of your business that we really help with. Um, first is new lead conversion. So if you're an agent or a team or a brokerage that does any type of advertising, be it online leads or otherwise, Getting that lead to appointment to transaction is the hardest part of the sales funnel to measure. And there was actually a, an article or a post written by the, the founder of CSU the other day saying how important it is to measure this part of the funnel, basically lead to appointment to appointment to closing, right? And that's exactly where we step in. So many other companies help you get that lead to the first conversation but after that first conversation is had, there's a big gap between the appointment and the actual closing. And so by introducing a client portal in that conversation, getting them where they spend the most amount of their time, which is on their phone, into your ecosystem is going to increase your lead conversion. So I would never actually present our product as a lead generation product. We're, we're actually, I will tell you, we would be a terrible lead generation product. Um, <laughs> but we are actually a very good lead conversion product. And on the other side of the experience is once you transact with someone, whether you help them buy or sell, it could be a decade literally before they transact again. And as we've heard these stats time and time again, it's like 90% of people say they would work with their agent, but only 10% actually do. Well, agents don't have 10 years to sit and wait for that person to call them back. They've got to go find the next deal. So by 
providing resources that are useful for a homeowner in your client portal, it's going to keep you top of mind without you having to put in that much effort. And so okay. we help with the past client retention. Oh, that's great. Well, that makes a lot of sense. So then how do you guys, when, and you know, I guess I was a little confused at first when you said client, uh, like client portal, because mm -hmm. when I, I consider a client somebody to be, well, in the very near future, somebody who has a buyer broker relationship agreement signed with me, or somebody who has a listing agreement signed with me, those are people that I consider clients sure. or past clients, which you already touched on. But tell me at what point would I, as an agent, put my lead, my un somebody who has not signed an agreement with me or is not actively working with me, at what point would I put them onto your app, my app, right, sure. my Rooster app, mm -hmm. to, to continue helping to get them toward that active shopping, active listing under contract stage? Yeah, so the good news is there's like no legal ramifications around the word client, so I can just say client whatever. Um, and, and the second thing I want to make clear is the, the Rooster brand does go away, right? So it would be the Dale app. Okay. Um, Ooh, so I it, like it, that. Yeah, the Dale app. They're very special. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Can I put my face on it? Can I put oh, my absolutely. hair on it? We have yeah. clients. You know what? A silhouette of just your hair as the yeah. little widget in the app store. There we that right there. Mm -hmm. That's that's branding. Um, <laughs> I'm selling t-shirts with that on it. <laughs> no, I love that. Yeah, a little merch section. We could put a merch section in the app. Nice. Um, but yeah, so to answer your question directly, I would introduce it as soon as you actually have like a, a real conversation with somebody. If you think about the client experience, a lead comes in, maybe it's an online lead that you paid for. Um, if you just sent it to them blindly, they're going to be confused on what this is. I don't know you. I haven't spoken with you. Your download rate is going to be abysmal, and then you're going to get mad at me. Um, if you actually have this conversation, hey, Dale, look forward to We set the appointment. Look forward to meeting uh, with you for coffee tomorrow. Next step, I'm going to send you a link to download my client portal. It's really important that you do this because this is the easiest way for you to communicate with me, the fastest way for me to send you properties I think you're going to like. And also, you'll have exclusive access to my list of local vendors who I know, like, and trust. Okay. So then you send them that invite. You get them to download the app. Um, you know, you meet for coffee the next day. They don't have it downloaded. You'll know. You can resend the invite beforehand. You can remind them at your coffee um, date. And ultimately, that is an ideal timing. Great. So... I'm assuming that my app, right, the Dale app, yeah, uh, the would be connected to whatever my website is as well. So we'll, we go directly to your MLS and integrate it uh, and integrate the IDX feed or Val feed. We prefer a Val feed because of the additional data we get. Um, so it doesn't necessarily integrate with your website as far as IDX Val feeds are concerned. We do pump data into your CRM. We have direct integrations. Uh, we actually have a direct integration with websites like Sierra, Sierra Interactive. So if you're setting up saved searches there, they'll get automatically ported into Rooster. And if they, if your client's active in the app, then that will reflect in Sierra. Um, we built the first ever embedded app in FUB that allows you to search the MLS uh, and share listings that way. So that's been a huge win for FUB clients. Oh, that's um, great. Yeah, we, we're FUB fans here. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's big time. Yeah, so our, our FUB integration um, has been incredible. Um, like I said, it's the first embedded app to let you search the MLS and chat with your clients directly inside of FUB. So you can search for properties and share it without leaving FUB. That's been um, a huge success. And then um, we're talking right now with Wailopo about getting an integration set up so that we can pull in save searches from them as well, which just makes life so much easier for the agent. Great. That's excellent. Uh, well, you know what I'm curious about? I always like to ask vendors this question. Who is Rooster best for? Who's your ideal client? I would say our ideal client is going to be a real estate team or a team bridge or a smallish, medium-sized independent broker. Okay, great. Any particular reason those, are your, those make your best clients? I would say teams and the aforementioned group of people. 
Uh, generally, our, from my experience, right, this is just personal experience, um, run their business most like a business, right? Um, and they're just, they're a business that just happens to sell real estate. And so they really understand how to implement technology. They care about their brand and the quality thereof. And they, they're, they're high quality implementers of technology. And, um, that has just been a sweet spot really for me ever since I've worked in the real estate tech space. Excellent. And then I obviously, well, obviously we could probably take the inverse of that to answer my next question, but I want to hear it from your mouth. <laughs> who are not your best clients? Who, who doesn't make a good client for rooster? I would say, um, individual agents who are relatively new in the business. Okay. So we do have a, a, a smaller percentage of our clients who are individual agents, but these are people who are like the only licensed salesperson in their organization. And they have an ISA and two admins and a marketing person. Um, so they're the only agent in their organization. Um, the people who aren't the single agents who aren't a good fit is someone who um, is newer, who doesn't care about lead generation. They're just, uh, they're happy doing, you know, six to 12 deals a year. Okay. Got it. And I'm also going to assume, and this kind of holds true for any tech, any lead providers, website providers, CRM providers, anything. I I've generally found that the people who think that there's a magic bullet with whatever technology it is, that's mm -hmm. going to make the conversations for them uh, make good conversations for them, make appointments for them that will turn into closings and essentially spit out a paycheck for them without having to work and focus and, and tailor it to themselves. Nothing works for them. Would you agree with that? Oh, hundred percent. It, it cracks me up. I, and you know, y'all have been to a million more masterminds than me, but every mastermind I go to, there's always someone in the room who's like, what's, what's the, what's the magic bullet? Right. I hear that every time I go to one of these masterminds and, and like the magic bullet is hard work, dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, pick whatever you like. Like I could never be a door knocker, but I could make a hundred phone calls a day. Right. Yeah. So pick what you like and then hard work. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Brian, do you uh, have any questions you want to fire off at Randy? All kinds of questions for Randy. Are you ready? She's kidding. Yeah. You know, um, it just, so I appreciate the portal concept. And by the way, I think it's a great idea because, you know, you're mirroring other industries and people already have the expectation of, of what's going to happen with that. But as the agent, so great, I've got this portal and that's G, G was nice. What, how am I going to use that to get a higher conversion rate on my people who haven't closed? And how am I going to use it to continue to follow up with my past clients so that, you know, we, we don't end up with that 10, you know, yeah, 90% of the people said they would and only 10% actually did because, you know, that's low hanging fruit. And I see this as we move forward, you know, obviously things are going to change. We don't know exactly how yet, but the ability to get somebody who already trusts me is going to be gigantic over the next, over the next 12 months, I believe. Totally. And so the way that it works out for the agent in the day-to-day -day life is very much using data to identify where people are in their own personal real estate journey, right? And, and, and so often we talk about data, everything's data, 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 but a lot of people don't ask the question, what data? What am I doing with it? How is it useful to me? Well, if I can get someone in my client portal and we have a wide array of tools, people are gonna gravitate to the tool that reflects where they are in their journey. So we, in our client portal, we have a education center that you can customize and do what you want. But the idea is people are putting more research into the home buying process before actually buying these days. And so that's a sign of someone who is very early stage. And if you find that your people who are inside your portal are reading articles about the benefits of, of home ownership, what, you know, what do I do next after I make an offer? What are the pros and cons of you know, whatever it is you add in there. Why move to uh, Philadelphia, right? 
um, you can use that to know, hey, this person is probably a little further out. I can shoot them a message, but I don't want to push them to go see a home right now for fear of being too aggressive. But if you see someone who's in there every single day, they're looking at properties, they're adding them to their favorites, this is great. Or if you have a past client who goes in there and they're trying to get their home value or they're just reaching out to you that you're your referred kitchen remodeler. You know, if someone reach out reaches out to all of these vendors that I recommend to help improve the quality of their home, I'm going to reach out and say, are you interested in how that will impact the, the your equity of your home, right? Do you want to talk about how redoing your kitchen and bathroom will add more equity to your home than just like painting the walls or whatever the, the whatever the conversation needs to be for you. Um, but using that data, making it actionable will allow you to find people who are closest to transacting. Yeah, I appreciate that. I think all too often, and again, as we move forward, we need to find ways to provide value. If I can say, hey, Randy, here it looks like you're doing some of these things. I'd like to come over. No, no, no charge. I'd just like to come over as a client, you know, as a past client. I'm sure that you'll refer me to other people. I know you already have. Give you an idea when you do steps A, B, and C, the impact that it's going to have on the value of your house. Is that something you find benefit in? I would be really surprised if people said no to that simply because most people aren't doing it. And, you know, I, I, one of the things that I love about your app is it allows you to figure out ways to be a differentiator. And, you know, different isn't always better, but sometimes different gets picked just because it's different. Sure. And, and, and I, I want to point out, I was very specific in saying when you see someone who is getting in touch with your preferred kitchen remodeler, I didn't say pick up the phone and ask him, are you ready to sell your home? Like, <laughs> that's gross. Like, shame on you. But if you say, hey, I saw you reached out to Jennifer, my preferred kitchen remodeler. Like, one, did she provide good service? Did you get your questions answered? Oh, by the way, are you interested in knowing how that will impact the equity of your home? Yeah, I was going to throw one in there before you got to the equity of your home. I was going to say, should I keep her on the list? Right? Yeah, totally. Hey, I, you know, I'm always top grading my list. I see you reached out to her. The two questions Randy just asked you, they're going to say something to you. And then um, I might look, do you, Randy, do you mind if I do a little scripty? scripty yeah, let's stuff do it. The, yeah, man. So what you asked was, uh, are you curious about how that might impact the value of your home? Instead, what I might do is use some social proof. I might say, yeah, you know, a lot of my clients who focus on bathrooms and kitchens really make a massive impact in the value of their home. Uh, and I can even run a quick simulation on what it might do for yours if you're interested. I love that. Absolutely. Cool. You know, I had to like dial it up a little bit. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're the guy. You're the guy to, to do it. <laughs> um, I only use my powers for good, Randy. <laughs> With great power, so they say. <laughs> right. Brian, any more? What do you think? No, I think that's great. I mean, and ultimately, I can really appreciate um, showing value on things. And, you know, what what I think is another valuable thing about your app is it keeps people inside of my ecosystem. Yes. And, you know, that is more powerful today than it was 20 years ago. 20 years ago, nobody had an ecosystem. <laughs> so, well, they didn't. I mean, really, no, right. you know, right. there, there was no ecosystem to stay in. And also there wasn't 85 different options for me to go. You know, we Dell and I talk about this. You better do a good job with the client you have, because if not, they're going right back on Zillow, Realtor.com, somebody else's website, and they're getting a new agent. And it's expensive to get people into my ecosystem we got to keep them there. And I, I think that your app is really designed in, in part. I know it has other functions to keep people inside of your ecosystem. Are you guys seeing that retention that comes from that? Yeah. So the numbers have been really, really, uh, really staggering. So we find that when you get someone into the app on average, they use it three times a week and they're in the app for, uh, four and a half minutes per usage. So wow. four and a half minutes, could be used any number of ways. Browsing for properties, obviously a favorite. Um, looking for vendors is another option. Reading the articles that are in there. So there's any number of, of activities that can be done. You're going to know what they're doing specifically. But the the actual usage of the app has been great. Um, I'll also say that we have less than a 2% bounce rate. Nice. So. 
people come into the app and they actually use it. Um, for context, one of our website partners told us that when people come to their mobile version of the website, their bounce rate is over 70%. So um, you have 98 out of 100 people staying and using it. Conversely, for a mobile-friendly website, you have 30 out of 100 people using it. So I, I hope that comparison um, hits home. Yeah, that's great, man. Uh, excellent. So I'm curious, Randy, since you are in the the tech space, right? You're in the the nurturing space. You're in the sort of client communication space. Uh, do you have any theory? What's your personal theory around automated communication? How much is too much? How little is too little? Like, what do you have any advice there for people who are trying to figure out? Like, because a lot of the people that are listening to this. Uh, are either trying to figure out how do I have my own messaging campaigns or setting how frequently should I be reaching out? Uh, what should I do? What shouldn't I do? I probably need to set up some automations if my team isn't controlling it entirely. Mm -hmm. And even to some extent, uh, agents on teams uh, still need to have some of their own messaging campaigns to assist them with their outreach. So what's your opinion? My opinion um, is simply do it in your voice, use your words. Previous to Rooster, I, I worked at multiple CRM companies, Sync and, Sync and now Lofty, right? And one of the major questions we would get is, well, do you have pre-written drip campaigns for me? Um, and you know, the answer was yes, because I was trying to make a sale and that's true. Um, the real answer would be, we have them, but you're kind of a fool if you use them yeah. um, because there's going to be, in any given market, a dozen other agents who are using the same platform and they use the same automations that use the same words. And so now, as a client, I've gotten seven emails that all have the same thing in them. I'm not impressed by any of you, um, nor am I attracted, right? But... If you go into a platform, what, and our platform really isn't best for like drip campaigns and things of that nature, we're, we're sending we're sending properties right now. Um, we're building a, a, a custom notific mass notification feature. But when you're talking about building automated messages, you have to do it in your tone of voice, or else you're not going to be able to attract people that are attracted to you. Um, so automated messaging is fine. Use it at the frequency that you would want to be messaged with, but go in there, spend the time, take a Saturday afternoon, you know, and rewrite them with your language, your words, your tone of voice. And I think you'll see a huge um, improvement in your in your success. That's great, man. Thank you for the advice. You know, uh, having that depth of experience of working with multiple apps, um, you know, one of the things that often occurs to me as I'm thinking about it, so, you know, I, I've coached the sales teams of lots of different apps and SaaS applications for real estate, and I work with some of the account managers and people who are on the front lines working with teams and agents every day. Mm -hmm. And you know the funny thing about it is that a lot of agents and team leaders don't take into consideration or value the knowledge that these account managers, account reps have, thinking that, well, you don't sell real estate, how would you know, right? That's, that's, you that's don't a valid do it yourself. Critique. What's that, Randy? So it's a valid critique, but I, I, I know where you're going, so I'm gonna let you finish. Here's where I'm going. These account reps who have that experience, they have experience at a much broader and deeper level than a lot of individual team leaders or agents actually have themselves. Like they get to see across the sea, they get to see across the board from the very highs to in the middles and the optimization that works and the things that work, the techniques and strategies that work. So, you know, I'm just giving credibility to what you're saying, being in a position where you've seen a lot of this stuff from a lot of different vantage points from a lot of different people, you can speak confidently on it. So I think that's a huge value for people that are listening to this. I have been very blessed to get to work with some of the top teams and, and just operators in the country. And while I don't have personal experience doing these things, 
I get to hear what works and I, I, I like to share those things, right? So if I have an idea, 99% of the time, it's just something that I heard worked for somebody else and I'm sharing it with you. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I certainly don't think I know everything, but I know somebody who will, so who will know yeah. the answer and I can work as a, as a broker of information for that purpose. That's excellent. Uh, Brian, any other questions from you? No, I think, I think we hit it on the head. I mean, there's a, a lot of good things and, you know, as we move forward and, and the world changes, we have to provide value. And I think, uh, something like Rooster, where you're keeping people inside of your ecosystem, you're referring them to vendors, you know, what are we going to do as agents, as we move forward, provide more value? We're going to, we're going to refer you to vendors. We're going to set up discounts. We're going to make your shopping experience easier, simpler, faster. I, I think that's where we need to go. And I think, uh, I think definitely should take a look at Rooster and see if it's something that fits inside of your ecosystem. Whether you're a single agent or you got a 50 person team, you know, small brokerage, big brokerage, you know, Randy said, well, I don't, I don't know if that's his client. I appreciate who his ideal client is, but at the end of the day, any agent who has any kind of influence over any significant amount of people feels like they need to start building an ecosystem so they don't start having people leak away for lack of a better way to put it. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, to, to put it I differently, like I would say our ideal client or our, our non-ideal client is someone who wants to retire within two years. If you're two years away from okay. retirement, if you're two years away from retirement, we're not a good product for you. Uh, if you are looking to build a business that's going to be, that's going to run longer than two years, let's, let's, let's at least have a conversation. There you go. Yeah. You know, with regard to real estate, I like to say size matters. <laughs> Your database counts, right? It does. <laughs> you, the the size of your database, it matters. Uh, good. A little double entendre there, everybody. Uh, I do actually want to ask. Rooster. Appropriate, right? Rooster, exactly. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know if we're going to have to edit that one out or not. But, uh... <laughs> thank, thank God we can edit. Okay. Yeah, this yeah is right. Late, this is a late night cash call. Size matters, baby. Um, so <laughs> you've got to do that as your opening line, Randy. Somebody's like, tell me about rooster. You're going to be like, size matters, yeah, baby. Matters. Let me tell you about you, it. You want the biggest rooster in your market. <laughs> right. um, Randy, I want to ask you. What's that, Brian? I said, this is digressed. So <laughs> yeah. let's, let's, let's reset it and then go ahead, so then go ahead and answer, ask your question. Yeah, I want to ask, ask one more question before, Randy, we let you like, you know, promo rooster a little bit. Um, Randy, I want to find out from you, since you're in the real estate tech space, how long will it be before a digital Dale, preferably 20 pounds lighter, uh, can sell real estate for me and I don't have to get out of bed? Is that coming? When will it happen? And I need you to prognosticate for me. Um, so I, I have like two opinions that probably feel conflicting, but they really aren't. Um, you can train AI to sound exactly like you, to talk like you. You can train, I, there's AI that exists today that can become a digital Dale to reflect your knowledge. Um, like that's not coming, that already exists. There's just a few people who have actually taken the time to try to take their tribal knowledge and put it into the AI. Um, that's gonna be a great resource. That's gonna be a great tool to help you reach a wide amount of people at once, right? Um, technology is meant to enable you to improve the size of your net. But until Elon Musk builds a robot that allows me to take this AI, this Dale AI and plug it into the robot and sit down across from someone until that moment happens, you're not actually going to be replaced. Um, I very much believe in the value of sitting across from someone, looking them in the eye, shaking their hand, spending time together. Um, that, I, I have a hard time believing will get replaced with something this important. Like buying a home is so important. And agents who are who are busy, who are meeting tons of people, doing a lot of business, um, can can lose track of like the value to that one to every transaction is just another transaction for you maybe, but for that client of yours, it's their transaction, right? It's their home, it's their life, it's their future. Um and having someone 
to shepherd you through that, who cares and shows empathy and brings value to you, that isn't going to get replaced. But the AI that allows you to shake the trees and identify who is closest to transacting, that is going to uh, continue to improve. And the person who uses that AI to identify the lowest hanging fruit and then inserts themselves, that person is going to be wildly successful. Love it. So what I'm taking from that, Randy, is that for now, I have to figure out how to lose the 20 pounds myself. Unfortunately, the magic bullet is the hard work. Oh, after all of that, that's what I got from that. Okay. It's valid. Good. Well, Randy, tell us about this. Um, what, what do you have? What's a, what's a, how do people get engaged with Rooster? Do you have a trial? Do you have a, you know, a, what, what, how, do you, how do you want people to first engage with Rooster to figure out if it's something that they want to try out? Yeah, go to our website, rooster.com. That's we're a tech company, so it has to be hard to spell. It's R-U-U-S-T-E-R.com. It's rooster, rooster with two U's, not two O's. Um, go to our website, book a demo. It's, you're either going to be meeting with me or my colleague, Spencer, who's been in the industry for a long time as well. Um, we'll, we'll set up a personalized demo. We'll show you what uh, y- your own personal branded client portal could look like. We don't do any types of free trials, unfortunately, because with each client we bring on, we build them a brand new app and there's 120 steps we have to go through, which can't be automated, sadly. A a real life human being has to do these things to build your app, so we can't just build your app for a trial. Um, But we can show you what it would look like. I can invite you to try um, one of our apps as a client would experience it. Uh, but check out rooster.com, R-U-U-S-T-E-R.com. And um, we, we appreciate the, the conversation. Okay, excellent. Well, thanks for coming today, Randy. We appreciate having you on the show, man. And, uh, you know, uh, obviously, I, I, I don't know if I speak for Brian or not, but we really appreciate everybody in the tech space who keeps building amazing tools to help all of us sell more and, and ultimately make more money. That is what we're here to do. We believe that agents make real estate better, not worse. And so our platform is meant to enable you to serve more clients, more better, more better, more better. Love it. So Randy with the more better. (laughs) Well, thanks for joining us today, everybody on cash call. Randy, thanks for joining us, Brian and Dale signing out. Cheers. Thanks for listening to cash call today. If you like what you heard, come check us out at smartsalescoaching.com, And we'll be back again next week.